Hello, I'm Rod Butler. Welcome to Let God Speak. In many countries, the mental health services are stretched to their limits as people struggle with the fears of what is happening in the world. The media highlights on a daily basis the threats from terrorism, natural disasters, pandemics, wars, political unrest, and the list goes on. But amidst all the troubles, we can find lasting rest. So have your Bibles ready as we explore what God says in the book of Hebrews about how we can find true peace and lasting rest. On our panel today, we have Natasha Sewer and Alan Santa. Welcome. And before we discuss uh, our important topic today, let's bow for prayer. Heavenly Father, in this turbulent world, we all long for rest. As we discuss this topic now and read from the Bible, we ask for the Holy Spirit to direct our minds and give us wisdom and understanding and show us how to enter your rest. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, to start our discussion, when we look at Hebrews chapter 3 and 4, Hebrews chapter 3 starts off, I'll read verse 1, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. Chapter 3 introduces Christ as our high priest, and then the rest of chapter 3 and chapter 4 points out that it's Christ our high priest who gives us this rest. And in the book of uh, Hebrews, we notice that there's two times the word rest is used in chapter three and eight times in chapter four. And in fact, there's only a total of 10 times in the book of Hebrews, and it's in these two chapters. Seven of those 10 times, it refers to enter into rest, that phrase, enter into rest. So Alan, first question I'd like to ask you, does the meaning of the word rest today, uh, is it different to what the meaning of the word rest is as we read in Hebrews? Well, the word rest nowadays really means to take it easy, to stop working, take a break. And uh, the Greek word, katapausis, which is used in these verses, means more peace of mind, restful spirit. And uh, Christ gives us that sort of rest by giving us freedom from guilt. Right. Well, when we, when we look at chapter 4 and we go to verse 9, we have a different Greek word. And I'll read verse 9. It says, this is chapter 4 and verse 9. There remaineth therefore a rest, that word rest again, to the people of God. So, Natasha, what is the meaning of this word, rest? So the word that's used here for rest is sabbatismo. So everywhere else, it's in, uh, in Hebrews 3 and Hebrews 4, we find katapulses. But here, the word sabbatismo is different because it offers more than just rest. There's a spiritual emphasis. And so sub- sabbatismo is more than just a rest. It's keeping the Sabbath. It's um, a time away from our rests, uh, from our toils and troubles from the week. But not only that, it is a rest that is like the eternal rest that we will one day have in the age to come. So it is a promise for us even today that we can enter into a deep spiritual rest when we give our hearts to God. Right. Thank you. Now, when we um, when we look at uh, chapter three and four, Paul is drawing out here that there's a a physical and a spiritual rest. When we go back to to Deuteronomy chapter five, we see that the Israelites are on the, the borders of the promised land and Moses again he speaks to the, the people, the Israelites, he speaks to them the Ten Commandments. And when he gets to the Fourth Commandment, it's interesting, he links the Sabbath connection with rest. Alan, explain that to us. Well, if we look in Revel- uh, Exodus chapter 20 and verse 11, this is what we read. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them and rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So in Exodus, 
the verse reminds us that God was, is our creator, that God created everything. But if we go over to Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse 15, this is what we read. And remember that you were slaves in Egypt, in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord your God brought you out from there by a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to keep the Sabbath. So we find another reason for keeping the Sabbath. And so really, the, the, the Sabbath rest is a reminder that God is our creator and that God is our redeemer. Right. Interesting. Natasha, why is this connection with the Sabbath of creation and redemption? So God is cre uh, connecting creation and redemption because they are acts that only he has done. He created humanity in love. He created them with eternal life and he created them to live in paradise. But let's read Nehemiah 9 verse 6 and it says these words. You alone are the Lord. You have made heaven the heaven of heavens with all their host, the earth and everything on it, the seas and all that is in them. And you preserve them all. The host of heaven worships you. So note that God not only created, but he preserves and his ongoing power sustains the, those things that he created. So yes, man sinned and death and suffering has come into our existence. But God, just like he redeemed Israel from Egypt, is an example of how Jesus redeems humanity from sin. And it is an act of not only an incredible grace and incredible love, mm -hmm. but of his voluntary death on the cross. And so when we rest, when we keep the seventh day Sabbath, we remember all that we owe to God because he is not only the creator, he is our redeemer from our sins. And there's honestly, there's nothing that we can do in and of ourselves to achieve this. Mm. We owe it all to God's grace. It's an interesting point you raised about God, not only created, but he sustains us. Mm. We forget that if God suddenly withdrew from our existence, then it would fall apart because he is the great provider and preserver of all life. Thank you for that. Alan, um, Let's just go back to the very beginning with the Israelites. What was the original purpose of God choosing the Israelites? Why, why them? What, was, what did he want from that people? Well, at the beginning, God said to Abraham in uh, Genesis 15 verse 5 that he would make his descendants a great people. And if we turn to Exodus chapter 19, I'll read verses 5 and 6. And this is what it says here. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all peoples, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. So here we find that uh, God chose Israel to be a special treasure and he was going to use those as a, as a people that would show the world what rest in God was really like. And then, just as the priest stands and ministers to the people, so Israel was to be able to minister God's peace to the people of the world. Mm. Mm. So they were like God's witnesses mm. uh, on earth. That's Especially, right. Yeah. Yes. Okay, well, in Hebrews 3, Paul reviews um, <laughs> the, the history of Israel and um, particularly their, their years in the wilderness. Natasha, did they enter into God's rest? Well, sadly, no, they didn't. Um, as we read Hebrews 3 and, and 10, 11, it says this, uh, Therefore I was angry with that generation and said, They always go astray in their heart, and they have not known my ways. And so I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. And so we have to remember that the, when the Israelites left Egypt, that there was a mixed multitude. Um, they came with um, their idolatry. They came with their pagan practices. And what happened was this was a corrupting influence on the Israelites. And so what we find is uh, they were continually complaining. There was a, a lack of faith and a lack of disobedience. Mm. Yeah. Yes, that's, uh, that is interesting. I just want to read um, Hebrews chapter 3 and verses 17 to 19. Um, it says, but with whom was he grieved 40 years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? Again, this is the, 
the, uh, the Israelites who weren't obedient, and to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe not. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Now, Alan, I want to pick up on a word in this, the word carcasses. This is referring to a specific incident, isn't it? It goes yes. back to Kadesh Barnea and the yes. 12 spies going to the land. Tell us about that story. Well, when God took Israel out of Egypt, he took them down to Mount Sinai. And uh, that was where he taught them his law. It's where they built the sanctuary and so on. And they were there for about a year. After the year at Sinai, they traveled north toward the land of Canaan. And uh, it probably was not a very long trip because it's not very far. And they came to Kadesh Barnea, which is on the southern border of Canaan. And this, at this point, God wanted them to go in and take the land. However, this is where some of their distrust showed up. Before going in, the leaders said to, uh, to uh, Moses, let's send spies first and have a look. And so God, Moses said to God, is this what you want us to do? And God said, yes, you can send spies. So they picked out one from each tribe, sent them up, and they spent 40 days traveling through the uh, land. They came back and they reported, it's a beautiful land, but there are giants there. Those are people, are big people. We can't, we can't overcome them. And uh, if we read in uh, Numbers chapter 14 and verse 10, this is what happened. And all the congregation, this is after the spies reported, 10 of the spies said, we can't go up. But Caleb and Joshua, two of the spies said, with God's help, we can do anything. Verse 10, and all the congregation said to stone them, that's Caleb and Joshua. Now the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of meeting before all the children of Israel. So the people were all ready to stone Caleb and Joshua who said, yes, go up in God's power because they had this distrust and God had to intervene to save their lives. Mm. Mm. Now, Pastor, just on that story. Yeah. Was God being overly harsh here? What was the significance and what, what's the importance of this, this event? Well, I want to read um, Numbers 14, uh, just a few verses from there. And just to give us a little bit more insight. Uh, I'm in verse 22 and it says, Numbers 22, 23, and it says, hang on, it's here. <laughs> uh, because all these men who have seen my glory and the signs which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness have put me to the test, now these ten times have not heeded my voice. They certainly shall not see the land of which I swore to their fathers, nor shall any of those who rejected me see it. And then I'll pick it up in verse 32 and 33. But as for you, your carcass shall fall in, the, in this wilderness and your sons shall be shepherds in the wilderness 40 years and bear the brunt of your infidelity until your carcasses are consumed in the wilderness. So there is that word carcass again. Look, the Israelites had seen a mi mighty things. Mm. They had seen the 10 plagues of Egypt. They had seen, they had crossed the Red Sea. Um, they, had, they had seen the, the fire, by, fire by night mm. and the, the pillar of cloud by day. They were fed from manna, the manna from heaven. Mm. Uh, and they were, even, they were even able to drink out of rocks, water from rocks. God even spoke to them from Mount Sinai. And yet, despite witnessing all of these miraculous things and the power of God, they did not believe that they could overcome the inhabitants of Canaan. And so judgment is pronounced on them. And we hear this word carcass because it means consume or consume their lives because, again, their lack of faith. It seems harsh. But when you consider what evidence they had that God was real, it's it's the way it was. Yes. Well, it's interesting in that story. Um, and Alan, I put this question to you. Ten said, no, it's no good. Two said, yes, we can go up. They had the opportunity of uh, listening to the good versus the bad. They chose the bad. What does Hebrews say about our obligations to uh, providing good news? Well, we certainly do have an obligation to provide good news. I'd like to read to you Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 13. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, 
lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. So we have a responsibility to exhort one another. That's an old complicated word, exhort. But it means encourage one another. Mm -hmm. Get enthusiastic about it and remind people that God can do anything. And then if you go over to uh, Hebrews chapter 10 and verses 23 and 24, we read, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. So not only do we need to be an encourager, but we need to stir up uh, those around us to good mm -hmm. works. And, to, and that's how we experience God's rest, when we get that enthusiasm mm. so that he takes away our feelings of concern and worry. And how important is that for us today with all the bad news circulating, circulating to be able to encourage someone uh, when all they're getting is bad news, we can encourage them with the good news. Yeah, it's very important nowadays. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Okay, so the children of Israel, they, they died in the wilderness. They, they were judged, they're unfaithful. <clears throat> and then Joshua led the new generation, the next generation into the promised land. Natasha, how did they go? Well, they didn't do so well. It says in Hebrews 4 verse 8, For if Joshua had given them rest, then he would not afterward have spoken of another day. So while Je Joshua led a new generation of people physically into the promised land, but they did not enter into God's rest because they too fell away into disobedience. Okay, well, let's, let's go back to the very beginning. I want to go back to um, uh, Genesis. We're going to read Genesis chapter 2, because uh, I want to pick up on this Sabbath connection. Genesis 2, reading verses 1 to 3. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. Now, in verse, chapter 1, verse 31, he pronounces everything very good. And then we have here in verse 3, he says that the Sabbath day is blessed and it's made holy or sanctified. So God's provided for all our physical and spiritual rest way back at the very beginning. Now, Hebrews 4 introduces um, a connection with the seventh day Sabbath. Alan, um, explain that connection to us. Well, let's read uh, Hebrews chapter 4 and verses 4 and 5. And this is what it reads. And he has spoken in a certain place of the seventh day in this way. And God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again in this place, they shall not enter my rest. So Paul reminds us that uh, God gave us the seventh day as a reminder that he was the creator and that he, he gives us rest. But um, there's a reference there to the rebellion at Kadesh when it says that uh, he said, they shall not enter my rest because of unbelief. It's possible that we don't, we don't receive that rest that mm. God wants us to have. Mm. Mm. Natasha, just going through that, uh, that verse again, Hebrews 4 verse 4, is there any other significance that we need to be aware of with that, that verse? We have to remember as well, yes, there is some significance. Hebrews was written uh, 30 years, about 30 years after the crucifixion of Jesus. So what Paul is trying to highlight here is that he believes that the seventh day is the Sabbath. It has not been changed to any other day of the week. And what that means for us today, again, is that entering into God's rest is linked to the seventh day Sabbath and not to any other day. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. Moving on to uh, two verses down, uh, Hebrews 4 and verse 7, we've got an interesting verse. It says, Again, he limited a certain day, saying in David, Today, after so long a time as it is said, today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Now, in the King James Version, that's a bit of a... The English is a bit hard. I want to read that from the New Living Translation. It says, So God set another time for entering his rest, and that time is today. God announced... This through David, much later in the words already quoted. Today, when you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts. Alan, explain to us, unpack this for us. Well, in Psalm 95, verses 10 and 11, this is what David says. 
for 40 years, well, David's quoting God, for 40 years I was grieved with that generation and said, it is a people who go astray in their hearts and they do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall never enter my rest. And so this, David's referring to the rebellion at Kadesh here again. And Paul uh, indicates that it was time for them to listen to God and obey his voice. Uh, they failed the first time, but God gives us another opportunity now. Right. Yeah. OK, very good. So with, with all that sort of background, let's go back to Hebrews 4 and verse 9. And I'll read that again. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. Natasha, what is that now telling us, what we've just discussed? So because the Israelites did not enter into this rest, that invitation is still open for any of us, for all of us to still enter into God's rest. So I want to just go to Galatians 3 verse 26 to 29 and it says this, For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And this is beautiful because it tells us who the people of God are. They are no longer restricted to a race or to a people. Those accepting Christ become part of Abraham's spiritual seed and they become partakers of the promise that was made to Abraham. Mm. And so we can read again we're back in Hebrews 4, 10, 11, and it says this, For he who has entered into his rest has himself also ceased from his works as God did from his. Let us therefore... Be diligent to enter into that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. So again, Paul is declaring here that entering into God's rest is still open for any one of us today. And he's inviting us, who all who labor, to enter. Yes. OK. Um, Alan, how did the, the Israelites, how were they to find rest? Well, in Old Testament times, the way in which guilt was removed from the people was through sacrifices. So God gave them quite a uh, system of sacrifices, sin offerings and so on. And what takes rest from our minds very largely is the feeling of guilt. And therefore the sacrifices were given by God to take away that guilt so they could rest in, in the forgiveness that came through cleansing because of their sacrifices. But of course, then every week they also had the Sabbath. And so in those two ways, in the, the uh, taking away of guilt by offerings, sacrifices, and in keeping the Sabbath, that's how in the old dispensation, the Old Testament, if you like, that's how rest was uh, given to the people. Mm. Alan, I want to stick with you. I want to sort of follow up a question here. So if we look now at uh, Hebrews 4, verse 10, it says, For he that is entering into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works, as God did his. Um, Alan, is there a deeper meaning here when it says cease from his own works? Yes, there is. And uh, the understanding of it comes from, uh, from uh, Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 8. Because if we read here, we see, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. And this is the secret of the gospel, because the guilt that destroys our rest is taken away when we realize that Jesus, that Jesus, the grace of God has cleansed us by faith. We don't have to work and struggle we can rest in the grace that God gives us in the free gift of salvation in Jesus. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And we have that, that certainty, that assurance. Mm. That we have that salvation. Great assurance, yes. Yeah. Natasha, um, should, when should we make moves to enter into God's rest? It's available for us today. When should we make those moves? Well, the word today, the word today appears at least... Well, it says here five times, but in Hebrews 3 and 4, it's five times it says the word today. And it's very emphatic because it's telling us the importance of listening to God's voice and acting today. 
So if we if we do not know God or we're we've we've gone away from God and well, we had a relationship with God, um, the call is to accept Him right now to be your Savior. And so, yeah, wherever you are and uh, wherever you are in your journey with God, if you've drifted away, recommit to him today and enter into that rest. Right. So today is the day. Today is the day. In verse Hebrews 4, 11, uh, reading this again, it says, Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after that same example of unbelief. From that text, Alan, what should we be doing? Well, actually, um, it, I notice it says labor in the verse that you read. Yeah. In the New King James Version, it says, Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall under the same example of disobedience. We hear, we have the word diligent and we have the word rest, and they almost seem to be opposites. But if you think about it, they are not, because the rest that comes with uh, salvation in Jesus comes because we accept the life of obedience that flows from the peace that God gives us. And therefore, the verse makes it quite clear that it's today. We, we can accept that today and we can uh, uh, get the rest that comes by knowing that we're obedient to God. Mm, OK, I mean, Natasha, just in closing, um, how does the Bible describe this rest? I just want to read Philippians 4 verse 7. It says this, The rest that he gives us and the peace of God will surpass all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So the rest that he gives us, it is a peace that cannot be gained from the world. It is the peace of God. Which again, uh, as we said in our opening, with all the turmoil going on, mm. the world craves for that rest. The world needs that rest, wants that rest. And it's available to anyone who gives their, their hearts to Christ. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you for that discussion. Look, we all, we all long for rest in our busy lives, but when our faith is in Christ, we find spiritual rest every moment. We are invited to enter into a physical and spiritual rest every week on the seventh day Sabbath. This time with God gives us a glimpse of that ultimate rest when we spend eternity with Christ, our Creator and Redeemer. We invite you to accept Christ as your Saviour today and enter into his rest. Thank you for joining us on Let God Speak. Remember, all past programs plus teacher's notes are available on our website, 3abnaustralia.org.au. Email us if you wish on lgs3 at 3abnaustralia.org.au. Join us again next time and God bless. You have been listening to Let God Speak, a production of 3ABN Australia Television. To catch up on past programs, please visit 3abnaustralia.org.au. Call us in Australia on 02 4973 3456 or email radio at 3abnaustralia.org.au. We'd love to hear from you.